All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop 2024. And today we're gonna go over the saving process. And my guess is most people have no clue what they're doing. So today I'm gonna to show you multiple ways to save for multiple different reasons. And then in the end, I'm gonna give you some links to my website, which will let you create an action to automate the process because it's gonna be much longer than you think it is. All right, so we have this image here, all right? And we can see down here, this is its size. After you are done toning your image, we're gonna be assuming that all these images were toned and toned well. And after you've toned your images, we're going to save them. Now, first things first, I would suggest that when you're toning your images, you do not crop until after this first saving step. After you're done, you should always save, because a lot of times if we're saving and using layers, and I just added this layer, but multiple layers to an image, we wanna keep those in case we wanna go back in time and adjust them. So we're gonna save these first files for ourselves as a PSD. And the process here would be either to go to file, and you can use either the old or the new, so save as or save as a copy, because PSD will let you save um, either one. I'm gonna do save as a copy just so um, most people, this is what they're using now and they might get confused otherwise. So these are just my downloads folder. This is where the images are at, but normally they would be inside a folder in, in a regular location. And what I'll be doing is saving this file back into that original folder where the image or raw file came from. In this case, it's just my downloads. We're gonna change this to Photoshop format, which is your .psd. And I will just call this Asian, all right? So it's gonna be Asian PSD. That PSD to me signifies that I have not sized or cropped the image. I always save my images for myself as PSD files. This makes it easy for me to find in the long run. You can see we're saving the layers and our color profile is Adobe. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save and boom, just like that, that's saving for ourselves. Now the next step is gonna be dependent on what you want it for. And this is the bad thing in photography. There's lots of different ways to save for different outputs. Everything is different. So there's no such thing as just a one size save is all because it doesn't work like that. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is saving for the web, okay? So we're gonna assume that this image is gonna go on the web, a website somewhere. And the person who wants this image has decided they want this sized on the long edge, which would be, in this case, the height. If it was a landscape image, it would be this way, 1,500 pixels. And that's normal. Sometimes you do get both dimensions, and you would need to make sure that your ratio is the same, so that will work. So in this case, we need to size our image to 1,500 pixels. So the first step, and look, this is the long way to do it, but you're learning what is happening in the saving process which is important. So we're gonna to go to image, image size. And we're gonna make sure that we're in pixels. If we're in inches, this, just click this, go to pixels. Everything on the web is saved in pixels, not inches. So if someone tells you otherwise, they're wrong. Pixels, 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 it's a fixed dimension. And with pixels, 72 DPI or whatever is in resolution does not matter. Just assume that resolution does not matter because all that matters in pixel dimension is the pixel size. So we said the height is gonna be 1500 pixels. Bam, just like that. This little link constraints keeps the proportions the same, so it automatically sizes this. If you uncheck that, then it would warp it and look really weird, we don't wanna do that. So usually you want that little link there. We're gonna hit okay, and boom, it's resized our image. Now, when we're looking at an image to do the next step, we want to do it at 100%. So you can see up here, it's only at 50%. So I'm just going to go plus, 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 and now we're at 100%. Because when we sharpen an image, we want that to be at 100%. And when we sharpen an image, we want to make sure that the background is selected because you can't sharpen an adjustment layer. Next, we're going to go to filter and a drop down to sharpen. And we have two options. One is smart sharpen, one is unsharp mask. I actually prefer unsharp mask. So we're gonna learn that one, all right? So this is a little bit difficult to understand for people. So the amount, and you'll notice right here, 
the image is being viewed at 100% so I can come down here to these people. And the reason I size this image at 100% up here is because I know the image needs to be at 100% for you to get an accurate representation of what sharpening should do. So for a 1500 pixel image, I know about 20% is all we really need. The larger the image, the more the amount you'll need to sharpen it. The smaller, you'll need less. It doesn't stay consistent. And by viewing at 100%, you should be able to kind of see it. But in general, you'll learn over time what the amounts need to be. Now, sharpening is weird. It actually doesn't do what you think it does, make the image sharper. Actually, what it's doing is it is increasing edge contrast. So right here at this building, we have the bricks and then the white sky. That's an edge with high contrast. So on the brick side, it's going to make that pixel darker. And on the white side, it's going to make that pixel to the left of it brighter. One pixel to one side is getting darker. The other side is getting lighter. All right. The radius depends on how many pixels this way and this way it's going to go. We only want one because otherwise you'll get a weird halo and it won't work. And it increases the contrast there. And what that does is give the perception of being sharpened. Threshold is a harder one to understand. So let's go up here to my grayscale. We're going to hit cancel and go up to grayscale. And threshold works like this. So if you think of a person's face, well, we don't want to sharpen the skin because it's just going to make the skin look worse. We're looking for high contrast edges, meaning we want a difference in the grayscale. So think of thresholds as this. If you had a threshold of zero, it might sharpen the whole entire image, wherever there's an edge. So if you have a threshold of one, and this is a 10% grayscale step. So if you have a difference between this and this, that edge is going to get sharpened. But if it's less than, it won't get sharpened. So usually the higher number, so let's say we did three, and this is just a simulation that's not exact to the numbers. We need three differences in grayscale steps. So if you had an image from this white to this, it has to be that great here to this 40% for an edge to be sharpened, all right? And then five, six, and so on. So, so the higher the number, the more contrast difference you need for that edge to be sharpened. So if we go back to this image, and I'm gonna zoom way in, and we're gonna go up to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and, and we're looking up here. I know this is a low resolution image. We're gonna really over sharpen this so you can see it. So you can see that on the, left, the right hand side, there's like a white line. That's that pixel getting brighter. And then on the left side, it's a pixel getting darker. And as we increase this, it's changing the amount of how much that is sharpened. So if I go up really high, this edge isn't getting sharpened anymore. But if I go down really low, now it's getting sharpened very drastically. All right, and we can change that radius to make it wider so you can see that white bleed over this way. It's, it's sharpening a wider area. In this case, we just want 20, one, and this is a pretty high contrast image, so I'll just do five and we'll hit okay and it's gonna sharpen that area. Depending on your image, so if we were trying to sharpen an image where values were real close, like in this area, we might wanna have a lower number, but if we have a lot of high contrast areas, then we might wanna have a higher number. So that is sharpening, okay? The next step is to convert this to sRGB, because anything that goes onto the web doesn't use our current color profile, which is Adobe RGB. Everything on the web uses sRGB. If you save as Adobe RGB and upload it, it's most likely gonna be dark. So we're gonna go to edit, convert to profile. And right here, we're doing, it's doing what we said. Our current profile is Adobe RGB, and we wanna go right here to sRGB. If you want to flatten your image, which you're gonna do in a JPEG anyways automatically, you can click this little button. I'm not gonna click that little button because I do not want it to happen on my computer. But we'll just hit okay, all right? And now we're gonna save this out as a JPEG. So to save as a JPEG on the new system, you need to do a save as a copy. And then right up here, we're gonna do this and I'm gonna call this Asian again. And I'm gonna put 50. 1500 P next to it. And what that means is I've saved that at 1500 pixels on the long edge. I'm going to save it back to downloads 
has a JPEG, okay? And notice the converted color profile. Now, I could, inside of the folder that the image are at, put web, uh, meaning that this is an image size for the web. I could put web save, whatever you wanna put. It doesn't make a difference, we'll just do web. I'm gonna save it as that and hit save. So next we have JPEG options, and for some reason this off the web and has been saved as a progressive. We haven't used progressive uh, JPEGs in, in 20 years. So we want this to be baseline standard. And in my case, I don't want a lot of compression. I want optimum quality. So I'm gonna move this up to 12. I use a compression program called JPEG Mini to size the image down. But obviously the lower the number, the smaller the size, the more compression you're gonna have in that image. So I'm gonna hit okay and boom, we're done. Now, let's say I wanted to save this for print. I can't use this because the file's way too small to save for print. So I need to go back to that original image to either crop or resize the image. In my case, I can just go back before I started saving it and click this. But if I had deleted the image, I would need to reopen that PSD file. So now we're back to the original size and to size for print, we would do the same thing. So let's go just to a different image so we have something different to look. So in this image, not sure of the ratio, maybe five by seven, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the crop tool. So sometimes when you size an image, you need a specific ratio and ratio doesn't change the size of the image, it just changes the ratio, meaning this dimension versus this dimension. So let's see if it's five by seven, it's pretty close, okay? We're gonna change this to a two by three ratio, meaning two by three. And I'm gonna slide this over a little bit. And that's how we're gonna crop it. I'm gonna hit okay and boom. And just like that, the ratio has been changed, not the size, the ratio. So we're gonna print this six by nine because six by nine is the same ratio as two by three. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go up here to image and go to image size. But this time we're gonna go to inches because when you save for print, you're gonna switch to inches. So we're gonna make this mean dimension nine and it should automatically convert this to six, which is exactly what happened. But in a printing case, you do want resolution because this is determining the quality of your image. Now, most printers print around 300 pixels per inch, not DPI, P PPI. So we're gonna change that to 300. So this is gonna be a six by nine image with a resolution of 300. We're gonna hit okay and boom. Once again, we're going to take this dimension right up here and we're gonna make that 100 so we can see what the sharpening is done. I can already tell you I got this image off the web. It's already over sharpened that it is. So whatever we do here really isn't gonna make it look good, but you're getting the gist of the process. But if you wanna know what over sharpening looks like, see how this is like all pixelated looking? That's way over sharpened. Sharpen this image, so we would go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And in this case, it's a larger image, so I'm gonna increase the sharpening. So around uh, 45 to 50% for this, and we'll just do 45. We're gonna keep the radius at one. This is high contrast, like we don't wanna sharpen any of the other stuff, so we can leave it at five or six and we would hit okay, so now we have sharpened that image. Now, in this case, my printer prints with the Adobe color profile, so I don't need to change this, but if you're going to a lab or somewhere else, you would need to know what color profile they use, and you might need to convert it. In this case, I don't need to convert it because my printer prints on Adobe. So the last step here would be to save, so I would go to File, Save As. If I wanted to create a print folder, I can hit Print, and then create, and we call this, uh, we'll call this landscape. And in my case, because this is six by nine, I'm gonna hit six, X, nine. And so what that means is this image has been sized at six by nine, and I save all my print files as TIFFs, so full resolution, no compression, and you can see it has the layers saved. it is using the color profile of Adobe 1998 as a TIFF file. And I would hit save, and we get this window right up here. 
I'm on a Macintosh. I'm not going to change anything, actually. Hit OK, and boom, this image has now been saved for print. The last thing we're going to take a look at is this logo. So we have this logo here, and we're going to assume that this logo is going on a web page somewhere. You'll notice these checks in the background. This stands for transparency, okay? Meaning there is nothing here. So in this case, if I put a logo on the web page, all that would show up is the logo. If I save this as a JPEG and we'll just flatten this image, it would show up like this. This whole box, it would have the white. It would look really weird, especially if you are on black, because it would be this black web page and then this white box and the logo. We wouldn't want that. We just want the logo on top of the black. So we need to save this as a transparent image. To save something as a transparent image, you need to save it as a PNG. If you were using this for print, you could save it as a PSD file. That would be fine. But we need to save this as a PNG. Now, the first thing I would do is size this down as about the size it's going to go on the web page. So we're gonna to go to image, image size, and we'll just change this to pixels because everything on the web is pixels. So we'll make this 300 and we'll hit okay. It's gonna make it teeny tiny, yes I know. We're not gonna sharpen this image. We are going to convert the profile. So we'll go to edit, convert to profile, make sure it's in sRGB, hit okay. And now we're gonna save this as a PNG. So we would go file, I'm not sure if, save as has png options so you can see right here it automatically did png and so we would call this logo we want to embed that color profile and then we would hit save okay and now this image has been saved on the web done a little bit differently but close if you've noticed that sort of a pain in the neck to do we're going to go back to this image here and I'm just gonna go back to how it was opened. That took a lot of time and effort to do it. But if you go into my actions, you will notice that I have saving actions, so I don't have to do all those steps. The weird thing about saving is Photoshop doesn't understand the difference between a horizontal and a vertical image. So you'll notice I have a horizontal saving action, another vertical with the same dimension, and then I have a red one. And the red action is a conditional action, which looks at if the image is horizontal or portrait. And it will save either one of these depending on what you're doing. So if I wanted to save this at 2000 pixels, even though it's vertical, I do have a vertical action that I could click, but if I hit my conditional action, boom, it's done. So that whole saving process that we just went through, which took a really long time, these conditional actions save time. You just have to make them, and once you've made them, it works really easily and there's nothing else you need to do. So if you'd like to learn how to make these actions, I actually have a step-by-step -step process. You can follow along that video and make them and really save yourself a lot of time. You do have to make an action for each one. However, you can put stops in them. So when it comes to the dimension, you can also put a little stop so you can manually input whatever numerical size you would want. Well, hopefully you learned a little bit about saving process today. And if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely wonderful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.